Okay, uh -huh. that's it for the NBA. Yeah. Let's, let's talk about the Super Eagles of Nigeria, yeah. right? That's what we're be waiting for. Yeah. I mean, we were heart pumping and all that. You know when your team are two goes up, you're thinking, okay, it's going to be all goals, maybe five or six. Mm. And then later they are... I saw your comments last night, right? Squared. <laughs> two <laughs> one. I was like, okay, you should I continue watching that, this right? game or what? <laughs> I mean, it was heartbreaking. Come on, you guys. Just... Heartbreaking? What was heartbreaking about that, Cecilia? You, know, you, don't, you don't understand. You know when you're watching a football match alone, if you're watching it with Bill, always, you have people, someone to talk to. Yes. When you're watching it alone, you're like, okay, we have this thing in the bag already. You start talking to yourself. <laughs> you start talking to yourself, wondering, <laughs> what are you guys doing? Come on. Well, it, was, it was a good game on the night. I mean, show mm. test of character from the boys, you know, to all, and they had to, you know, they had that reserve. I thought the guys were already tired, but somehow they had the reserve for Igalo to you know, score the next one because it ended 3-2. What do you make of that? Yeah, they were at some point, especially towards the hour mark in the second half, they kept the Super Eagles on the back foot and you knew when they got um, the first goal in the first half to make mm -hmm. it 2-1, that going into the second half, the momentum might just be in their favour and it was down to our tactical prowess to keep the Mediterranean night, as they call the Libyan national team, at bay. But unfortunately, we couldn't do that as much as we ought to. And uh, our boys were tiring out. They were on the back foot. And deservedly, the Libyans got um, the second goal. But kudos out to go the way of the Eagles for rising up to the occasion almost immediately. Um, the technical advisor brought on John Ogu. And the league can play between him and uh, man of the moment, Odion Jurigalo, who sold the Libyans a dummy to get the third goal and that was the needed boost at that moment in time and we got it much maligned Judo Dio Ngalo has now scored five goals mm. in two games which is very very commendable absolutely I mean we're going to talk about what you make of the Libyans the equalizer especially mm -hmm. the, the first the second one the first one understandably so that it was difficult they had and all the right in front but the build up they had in that second goal before the final score. Well I felt uh, Leon Balogun should have dropped a pace back okay. to close ranks. Uh boys were they were they just that momentary loss in I the I can't leave all your thoughts uh, okay. out there. I know you have a lot to say about how that goal uh, was considered. But we need to go on a break now. We'll come back. We'll continue uh, with a review of Nigeria's match against Libya. Top of the table. Join top of the table with uh, Knowledge Musona of... Uh... Oh, this is a great... Ahmed Musa. Oh, they're walking into the net. Easy as you like. The... Carved open and it's set bad. He got it again. Four goals in two matches now against the Libyans. And it's the perfect start for the Super E. But he's that type of striker, Titi. He always hangs around the box. And obviously, the first ball played uh, to Musa was not offside. By the time Musa crosses it, I think Igalo was more like uh, on the same time line and yes there was there were possibilities it's all nice to maybe look at at a higher angle to see if uh, we can see anything but look 13 was nigeria's last time and in south africa and they're finding a group of them uh, in, drawn in a group same group as igalo lays off now to the skipper musa stays on his feet beautifully and tags it it's all starting to look a little bit too easy super eagles off early here in the Sfax. Well, that's what it'll be, but if you look at the amount of work that uh, the captain had to do in trying to free that ball from the cluster of legs of the Libyan defense, it was fantastic. Yes, there was a little bit of fortune in uh, some of the touches that basically fell for him in his favor before he could tow it into the back of the net. But look at Igalo, how selfless he was in the just Setting it across, sending the favor Absolute. to the captain. Turns provider, the goal scorer turns provider this time around. And uh, sets it up. Uh, well, I mean, there was still a lot of work, as you say, for the skipper to do. Beats two men, two tackles. There. Welcome back to Channel Sports this morning. We're still talking about Nigeria's. Uh, uh, a very narrow win over Libya, Libya in uh, Sparks uh, yesterday, an African 
our Cup Nations uh, qualifier. And Kyrie, before we went on that break, uh, we are talking about the performance uh, uh, of the players. I think it's only right we just go through uh, the players and from uh, back to front. So let's start with the defense now, player ratings. How would you rate uh, the performances uh, of um, starting with Francis Uzor in goal? Well, the goalkeeper, as much as uh, in the past few games, he has shown agility and sharp reflexes. But in that game, yeah. We, we saw nerves okay. again and again. It oh, was no, in no, cheetahs. No. Um, his judgment was quite suspect. Even um, the first goal, I felt he should have judged the flight of the ball well Bet. in trying to do uh, better, but that he couldn't. I rate him average. Put the number over, five over, over 10. 10. 5 over 10. Even though it produced two fantastic yeah, saves. Yeah, two fantastic saves. Basically, yeah. that was what I said. But um, he should be getting better because he's been at the World Cup. Mm. Yeah. He played three games at the World Cup. That's okay. the biggest stage. Your confidence should have received a boost. Now you're playing AFCON qualifiers and we're still witnessing some jitters and trainers. Nah, it shouldn't, no, it shouldn't be happening at all. All right, okay. let's move on to Leon, uh, Leon so, Balogun. Yeah, yes. for Leon Balogun, his judgment too was below par. He um, should have leaned back for the first goal, even for the second. He didn't drop a pace back. And um, for a centre half, you should be aware, even for players um, behind you. That's why you are at centre half to witness um, the pitch of play and try to keep um, the opposition at bay. That didn't do too well. Mm. I rate him 4 over 10. Wow. Oh, True second. True the better of the uh, centre halves. Um, he did well, creditably. And um, I felt he was the one that was quite assured of the two centre halves. I'll give him 5 over 10. Okay, and the last guy that we saw by talking about Olaino, what would you make up? Well, Olaino defended too narrow when the Libyans built attacks. And even, I felt maybe he was isolated. The other guy from the flank should have closed ranks to help him, which felt made, made him do too much. Okay, but Collins wasn't really active. That really no, 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 I'm, no, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not talking of Collins. Now, Collins is the, the left, left back. Yeah. The right back um, uh, on the night was um, Ola, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, he defended to narrow. The Libyans kind of got a few joys from the um, full from back the wings, position yeah. from the wings basically and I felt uh, he should also have done better and for some reasons he, he, he got tired too early I was wondering your fitness level it was, was it the only one though I, like, it wasn't, it wasn't the only one yeah. but the I, I particularly spotted very... him out a number of times mm. holding on to his waist I'm bending yeah. and what I was like what's going on with this young man is he not fit enough I would say 5 over 10 wow yeah, a lot of fights Jamil Collins, um, for me, uh, I would say he did quite well. Uh, more game time. Okay. I want more game time for Jamil Collins. Mm. In the first game against Libya, creditably well, um, his link up play and trying to join the attack was quite commendable. But yesterday, because of the pressure, uh, it didn't buckle. But, you know, with more games, the confidence level will um, go a notch higher. And I think going forward, he should, should look in his direction more mm. as the left back because he has shown potentials. Another five. All right, okay, another let's go five. to the okay. midfield, midfield now. now. Okay. Uh, to the so midfield. For all Guinea Carlo at Tebo, too many loose balls. Yeah. Too many loose balls. I, was, I wasn't really impressed mm. because last week I even uh, was expecting him to be the creative outlet ahead of Alex Iwobi, if you recall. Mm. But over the two games, I feel he should have done better. Another Alex five. Iwobi? Alex will be um, a bit selfish at some point, <laughs> but um, he was ebullient. We saw the ebullient and he was creative. He, he wasn't just a, a playmaker who would just eat and hope. He aimed for the ball. He knew where he was playing the ball to. And the uh, men up front got service whenever Alex will be got the ball. I'll rate him 6 over 10. 6 over 10. With Fred Ndidi. With Fred Ndidi. Lose balls as well. Pick a needless yellow, yellow card. card. Pick mm. a needless yellow card. 5 over 10. <laughs> <laughs> Just with that alone. 5 over 10. It was good. It was, it was, it was, it was, it was upsetting. Card, yeah. It was let's, let's, upsetting before that time. That. Let's no, go to the no, attack. No, give yeah. John Ogu opportunity. Yeah, we'll see about that. Yeah, the coach still has to decide on that one. Let's go to the attack now. Yeah, the attackers. Ahmed Musa got a goal. 
Well, he took his goal well, but mm -hmm. he has to improve on his crosses. Okay. Yes. Thank you. He for has that. to improve on his crosses. Mm -hmm. Six over ten.